Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Builder's Guide. So in this episode we're going to be going over custom paths and roads in Minecraft and how to actually mix them in with our natural environment. Now if you're new to the channel we do a lot of time lapses and tutorials so make sure to hit that subscribe button. So last episode when we built the village um, we're kind of joining this up. We're actually going to be just making a simple path from here and just going at the minute at least into the woods so the way that I do this is by using some sort of colored wall this is just to do the basic like path and try and find especially with Minecraft terrain the most natural way that you would actually go down there so try not to go from you know straight down the most steepest part usually people will go um, the easiest route for them even if it means winding uh, along down there so yeah putting down some orange wall this will just give you a or, or any other type of type of wall or block just something to mark out the actual path that you want rough path that you want um, now this yeah it just makes it a lot easier now I'm just destroying a couple of the trees around here we're gonna be doing some more stuff on trees and how to make custom trees um, and custom forests as well in a later episode but you can just see me you know removing all of the different uh, bushes and things like that just to kind of like show you guys where we've actually got this natural path so just looking at it up close, um, obviously the video is a little bit glitchy. This is just something that I've found with 1.14. It seems to be really glitchy with recording software. But at least you can see where the path is and how it goes naturally with the actual terrain. Even though it's the one of the longest routes rather than it being a straight line uh, like typical. Now with materials what you want to do is pick out something as a base material. In this case I used coarse dirt. And then after that have a look at getting a variation block. So this is just the first variation block and in this case I used brown concrete powder. Um, these two work really well together. After that you want to find a, another block to actually mix in. In this case I used the gravel block in order to create a contrast between the two and it also means that we can mix textures with rocks and things like that a little bit later on. And then finally with the actual path what I've done is added in some stone for some of those blocks and also soul sand underneath stairs like we've got the moss stone stair right at the back. Now these really work quite well together but um, using this 5x5 five five block um, you can actually come up with your paths really nice and easy and I do recommend actually doing this before you even place down a real path blocks. Same again using stone if we start with a cobblestone kind of base we can then add it in a variation block of for example gravel. Now these two look really good together and it looks like the uh, kind of cobblestone has been worn down. But then if we take that a little a step further we want some sort of contrast block and this time we've got the most natural choice which is the moss stone to actually add in a little bit of mossy. Now obviously if you're doing a path with this make sure the mossy kind of bits are where naturally there might be grass growing nearby so it looks like that. Now variation blocks I've gone for this is andesite this time because it's got more of a texture on it but also some dead coral. Um, I can't quite remember what coral block I used but I did use a coral block on this one and actually when it's dead looks quite cobblestone as well. Now you might be wondering how do we actually mix these two together. Again, build yourself a nice big grid. I think this is something like a 9 by 7 or something like that. And just have a straight line between the two variations. Then just kind of angle one of them. So let's create an angle going across them. This just helps to break up this straight line that you have. Really, really clear uh, straight line. And then after that what we do is we actually start to really mi mix them in. So this is where we actually take some blocks from one side and add them to the other. So you can see there's bits of dirt in the other cobblestone side and there's bits of cobblestone on the dirt side. So this makes a really nice transition between the two. So if we take that, what we've just learned, and actually uh, put this into the path, what we'll do is starting with a base of coarse dirt because we're doing a nice dirt path. And then we're just going to be bringing that down following where we've put in those kind of marker blocks, those orange wall marker blocks. Um, and just to make it natural, now I went with a, a road that's actually free wide. Um, of course you could do it bigger, but because my village is only three houses, I didn't think that they're going to have a lot of travel going in. But three blocks wide can make sense, say for example, if they had, I don't know, a cart or if they had some horses or something like that, um, that they'd be taking down. Three blocks wide seems kind of reasonable. I think two blocks would be a little bit too small, it would be more like a footpath. So at least they can get in and out of the village. So then taking the first kind of base block, which is our brown concrete powder, and just mixing that in and making it a little bit more natural, and then using the gravel as well to create a little bit more variation, and just kind of like mixing this in to the main path. Then the next thing I wanted to do after that is obviously we've got this transition zone. Now, same with when we had the dirt with the cobblestone type roads, we also need to create some sort of transition with the actual grass around it, and the easiest way to do that is just by putting around a couple of those blocks that we've got in the main path, 
and mixing them around. Now, because we've got like more of a forest around us, what we can actually do is use stone blocks, andesite blocks and slabs to actually create stones around the path. And this works really, really nice. And actually, because you've got the gravel in the main road part of it, it actually mixes well together as well. So you can see me just putting in some slabs now. I wanted to smooth out the road a little bit, especially on these uh, transitions. Of course, we haven't got slabs for dirt or anything like that, but what we do have is similar kind of colors. So we've got spruce wood planks, we've also got oak wood planks, we've also got the new stone. So where we've got gravel, we can actually switch that out for either andesite or normal stone. And where we've got dirt, we can actually use our spruce wood planks and stairs. And I've just used the oak wood planks as a nice variation block within this. So you can see me just kind of like adding in a little bit more detail around the sides to try and mix it in using, you know, bits of stone. So putting in some slabs, um, and putting in some more blocks around it and also using some bone meal around just to add in a lot of the grass. I actually come in, what I don't like with the bone meal is that you get a lot of flowers, a huge amount of flowers. So what I typically try to do is actually use bone meal just to get around um, putting down a lot of that grass and then come back and remove a couple of the flowers and just leave it as that really. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Minecraft Builder's Guide.